we're really excited to finally be here and we we wanted to set up this webinar just as a space for us all just to step back and and take some time out to reflect and share experiences exchange ideas and to start a conversation thinking about what can we take away from this time um I think that you know, the obvious question about why now is because COVID has really raised lots of really difficult challenges for people, hasn't it? You know, whether it's sort of a, having to suddenly work from home, you know, juggling home and family and work in the same space, having to suddenly shift all of our teaching online, um, being isolated from colleagues, uh, yet, you know, yet another Zoom conference as we have now, sort of Zoom fatigue and cancellation of many of our academic conferences as well. And one of the things that I've been really struck by is the diversity of people's experiences as well. You know, some, for some people, it seems to have been an incredibly good time where they could just get in and work and other people, especially people with kids, have found it incredibly challenging. And all of this still remains in a state of flux. Gregor was just talking about a region in Germany that may well be going back into lockdown. So it's not like we're out of this. But apart from the challenges that, that COVID has raised for us, I think it's also a really great opportunity because crises, breakdowns, problematic situations are really instructive for uncovering what's really important, um, blowing apart the taken for granted and opening up new musings about what might be possible. And as we're starting to open up, we hope, hope there aren't too many sort of reverse lockdowns again, and recognising that different countries and different institutions are at very different phases. Um, we just thought it would be a great opportunity to, to start thinking about what this new academic normal might be like. And, to, and that can be for us individually, and also what it might mean for our faculties and also our peer communities. And, starting to define that moving forward because it's our actions and our decisions that matter. The, you know, the, our faculties and our peer communities are just us. Um, they don't exist without us and our academic life is you know, we're in charge in some way of making choices um, as much as we can. So I think it's timely for us to stop and reflect, uh, you know, as I said, for ourselves, for our faculties, institutions, for our peer communities, and Chris Fraunberger in our group the other last week just talked about you know, everything that we thought was set in stone, we're now realising might now be movable. So um, we want to open up this space just to start thinking about what have we learned so far about what's important, what do we want to take forward to be part of our new normal, um, what could we do without, what might be new ways of working, researching, teaching, collaborating, being a group, being a faculty, engaging in professional activities, engaging in peer service? Um, what does that mean for people who are in leadership positions or management positions? You know, how, do we, how do we support people if we're continuing to work in some of these um, more distributed or physically distanced sort of ways? How can we strengthen collegiality out of this if we're not meeting together so often in conferences or in, in physical meeting spaces? And how do we negotiate the balances between academic and personal lives where boundaries are becoming increasingly blurred? So lots of really good stuff, I think, to think about and everyone has different experiences to contribute. And what we thought would be useful at the very beginning is, and I'm just going to start uh, to set up a share screen. Uh, so yes, so we what we thought would be useful would be to to take a, a sort of a, a brain a, like a brain dump or a brain write of what people are currently thinking because it gives a sort of a collective sense of what people's experiences are. So. In your email that you got out, and Svetlana, this could be put into the chat window as well. If you can go to this link on another device um, or, or a separate screen, and you can access this poll. 
this Mentimeter poll. It doesn't require any registration, so it's all anonymous, so you can say what you like quite safely here. And we're hopefully just going to step through this really quickly just to get a collective sense of what people are bringing to the room here. To move it on, I'm not... So that you should see on your devices uh, a first question, which is about what's your overall experience. It's a sliding scale. Um, you can just respond. So I just want to qualify. This is not an academic research project. So you interpret these questions as you like um, and just use it as an opportunity to do a bit of a brain dump here. Um, so we're seeing So the colour of, if you can see the collective results as they come in on your Zoom window, and the colour and size of the colour block is the distribution and the number is the average of what people are responding. So I have a think about what's surprising here. I mean, I, what I'm surprised about is uh, the number of people who are talking about feeling like it's been really productive, um, how it's been really stressful for some, but not so stressful for others. How almost everybody or lots of people are really feeling like they've got some insights out of it. And different experiences around the social connectedness of the time. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to move on to the next question. You will get a copy of these results after we'll post them out, just in case you're interested. So I see people still still logging in. So the um, this next one is a word cloud, and it's saying what what do you miss about academic life? And in some ways, this is sort of like what do you value? Um, what's in, you know, what? It points to the sort of things that you can value. Now, as a word cloud, it can just take one or two words best. If you also want to say the same thing, if you write type the same word, it will just make that word bigger in the word cloud. Traveling is, a, is um, a big thing people have missed. And travel, personal meetings, lots of personal meetings, social contact, just those discussions, informal discussions, the coffee discussions, the face-to-face, -face, the peer contact, the direct conversation. So there's lots of stuff around the social interactions that are, that are coming out. And a lot of it is pointing to some of the more informal things as well, the coffee talk, the informal socialization. Great. So you can get a sense of some of the collective feeling about what are the things that you really, we all really missed working from home there. So again, the coffee talk, the travel, the personal meetings, the face-to-face, -face, and the discussions with students. So there's quite a few there about missing those interactions with students. Again, in the interest of time, I'm just going to move on to the next question. And this is about what did you not miss? And what this can point to is, you know, what's some of the silly work that, you know, you were glad not to do, or the, the crazy work, or the useless meetings, or, you know, what were the th this sort of points to some of the things that you might be able to get away with not doing anymore, or doing less of, or doing differently. Unproductive meetings, travel. So travel was something people missed and travel was something people won't miss. Commuting, boring meetings. So that, does that mean all the Zoom meetings were not boring? Unnecessary meetings, unproductive meetings, boring meetings, useless meetings. So there seems to be a whole lot of things about needing to think about new ways of doing meetings.
and you people not missing commuting not missing the interruption so obviously being able to work from home there was something about having more control over space maybe or or work that the fewer inter interruptions so i think we're sort of getting a picture there about you know uh, mainly around meetings and commuting travel not being missed bad meetings not being missed Moving on to the next question, um, what, what worked well about academic life during COVID for you? So we know that there are lots of things that were challenges or difficult, but actually what did you like? Um, what, was, what were some surprising things that you hadn't expected or some um, ahas about working from home or um, and this one isn't a word cloud. It allows you to do some longer comments if you want to. So being less bounded by specific lecture time. So the flexibility that moving teaching online gave to, uh, to structure teaching in a different way. Being able to work for longer periods on something than working in the office. So work-life balance. So for some people, it worked well having better family time, better work-life balance. So, so that quite a few about fewer interruptions and, and having more sort of control over time, more flexibility in working, though a double-edged sword. Um, making teaching, doing teaching in a different way, flexibility of teaching, do, design the seminar tasks more interactively. What you gain from not having a commute. Being surprised about online meetings working well. Um, some people seem to do, someone did talked about doing well between separation between work and home. And we also know that for other people, that's been a challenge having that separation as well. Again, being surprised about how well the teaching worked in being able to activate students. Being able to attend multiple conferences online. So missing the, not missing the travel and being able to still get to conferences. Communication on Slack that maybe point to some of the ways that people looked to make up for that informal social interaction that people missed talked about missing before. Working without books, that's interesting. So a whole lot of interesting responses here about some of the things that did seem to work well, which seemed to be about a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more control and some reimaginings of teaching and how time is structured and, um, you know, and negotiating balance between home and life in different ways. That's in the same conditions for all, fairness for colleagues, students in other places. Yep. Great. So again, in the interest of time, um, this this next one, just because of time, we I want you. I'd love you to think about very particular um, uh, instances, like what what did your faculty do well, um, or your leaders, or your, your group, or whatever in uh, in these areas. So we're just doing it as a sliding scale here, but. Again, think about specific instances of, of what they actually did well. Not much well yet. <laughs> so some bimodal responses so far for taking decisions or responding in a timely way, communicating well. So again, some mixed responses there, sort of distributed and ending up sort of sitting around the middle. So obviously different faculties, different leadership teams were able to handle this in different ways. 
And I'll just move on quickly to the last question, which is about more your peer community. Because often as academics, we have sort of a, an identity that's related to our faculty or institution, but often our professional identity is also more closely tied to our research area, our research community. So this is talking about the peer community. And we know we've seen lots of people moving conferences into online models or doing innovative things there. And again, some, some things uh, coming up here. So it seems like the, some of the peer communities did a little bit better than our faculties in supporting us, although obviously there are different spaces of concerns. What, what in just closing up, what I would just like us to reflect on in all of this, um, these, these point to some of the foundations for taking forward to some of the discussions in the breakout group, because these experiences and responses start to point us to what's important what are the values that matter to, to us as individuals, to our faculty, to our colleagues, starts to point to what might be some of the things that are changeable and in what sort of ways they might be changeable. And it also points to, if you think behind some of these, some of the strengths and capabilities that we can draw on. You know, I think um, overall people have been incredibly resilient and uh, have been able to, to uh, make changes in very sort of rapid ways. And there are lots of particular strengths and capabilities, I think, behind much of what's been shared that can be drawn on in starting to think about what this new future might be. So thank you for your participation in that. I'll stop sharing the screen now and we will share the results with you as I said.